Hey, how you doing today? I am Tequila Coleman. In today's video, I want to talk to my God ordained believing spouses, and I want to talk to you all about your requirements for your prodigal spouse because your only requirement shouldn't be looking for a counterfeit removal. It's great when God removes the counterfeits out of our prodigal spouse's life, but that shouldn't be your only requirement. That shouldn't be the only thing you're looking for. That shouldn't be, you know, the very thing that causes you to open up your door, your home, okay, your life to this prodigal just because you see this, this counterfeit removal. Because if God removes the counterfeit and releases your prodigal back to you and they have no character, when you say I do, you're going to find yourself a year later standing for this marriage all over again. Because a lack of character is the reason why we see a lot of adultery being um, taking place in these marriages. OK, when I have character, when I'm a man or a woman of character, I'm able to say no to counterfeits when they are trying to you know, seduce their way into my life when I'm a married woman or a man, because I have character, I have morals, I have values, I respect my heavenly father, I respect the covenant I made, you know, before God and before and with my wife or husband, right? But it's a lack of character that don't care. It's a lack of character that only thinks about self, right? And we'll go ahead and commit adultery, right? We got to go beyond just looking for a counterfeit removal. We got to begin to look at, okay, does my prodigal know who he or she is as a man or a woman? Because again, you're marrying your king and your king needs to know, okay, he needs to see himself as a king. That's number one, but he needs to know his identity as a man. He needs to know his identity uh, in Christ. Okay. He needs to have vision. He needs to be in his purpose. Okay. Or or in his career, okay, his calling. He needs to have these things in place. We got to stop trying to save them, okay? We got to stop trying to, we got to stop lowering our standards, okay? And just saying that's good enough. No, it's not good enough. If God's not selling it for good enough, you don't settle for good enough because think about it. Even when God removes counterfeits out of your prodigal spouse's life, he still doesn't give your prodigal that release to pursue you. God, after God removes that counterfeit, God is telling your prodigal, okay, now I need you to begin to work on your anger, or I need you to learn what love is, or I need you to begin to forgive those who hurt you in your past, or I need you to go ahead and step into your purpose. God is steady, you know, growing and developing our prodigal spouses. So if God only, if, if God's not stopping at just a counterfeit removal, we don't we shouldn't just be looking for a counterfeit removal. We should be expecting more as well. OK, we got to begin to raise our standard and <clears throat> excuse me. Another requirement you should be looking for is does my prodigal. What is my prodigal's love language? Now, I'm not talking about the five love languages by Dr. Gary Chapman. I'm not talking about that. But what is their love language? OK. Is their love language to a toxic language or is it a healthy language? OK, because, again, if you get married to this person and they don't know what love is and if their definition of love, it hurts. If their definition of love, you know, betrays you, um, it's one sided, like you can give them all the love while they neglect you. Come on now, you're going to find yourself, you know, in a marriage where you are, you know, feeling empty, you're resentful, you're mad, you know, you're, you're thinking or considering a divorce. OK, so we got to begin to look for these things. OK, OK, yes, God, you removed the counterfeit. Now I want to see a growth in identity. Now I want to see growth in development in character. I want to see my prodigal, you know, walk, walking in their purpose and calling, right? I want to see the ability to apologize, right? I mean, let's just go a little small, okay? Let, let's stop talking about identity, purpose, and character. Let's do some small, look for some small things, right? Can I see ability, the ability to apologize? Can I see the ability to accept responsibility for your action, right? Can I, you know, I'm looking to see vulnerability or communication. Can you communicate with me? Can you express how you are feeling right now, right? Because if you can't do the basics, I can't say I do, right? So we got to go beyond just looking at counterfeits removal, 
And if you have children, you now have to put your children's best interests at heart. You can't expose your children to just any man or woman. No, you have to make sure this individual, before you bring them in your life, in your children's lives, that they have a heart for children, that they are patient with children. They know how to talk and treat children. OK, you got to make sure this person see your children as their children and they're willing to protect your children, because if not, you shouldn't have them around them, period. OK. So we got to go beyond just looking for a counterfeit removal and begin to raise our expectation. We got to raise our requirement. We got to expect more. OK, expect more from your prodigal. They got the best in them. But it's going to require for you to require it back. Okay. It's like your prodigal know they're not their best self. Right. So they need to be challenged. Okay. We, as the God ordained believer spouse, can challenge our prodigal by becoming their best self just by expecting it, by requiring it, not accepting just anything or them coming back anyway. No, I'm looking for character development. I'm looking for protection. Can you protect me? Or do you got me out here exposed to the enemy? I'm looking for communication. I'm looking for vulnerability. I'm looking for responsibility. Can you be, can you show me that you have learned from the past? You're willing to admit your wrongs. You're willing to, you know, apologize. You know, are you, you know, I need to see this stuff. I need to see you. You want to gain my respect back. Okay. Because I can't enter into a marriage with a person I don't respect. You Do you understand this? And for my man, okay, what are your requirements? What are your standards? You should have a requirement that your prodigal wife, when she come back, she need to know how to respect you as a man. She need to know, know how to talk to you as a man. If she don't know, and, and you can ask her, are you willing to learn? Because you should, you should, if she say yes, then go ahead and teach her, okay? She, she should know how to, you know, submit her will up under her husband, okay? Don't just accept her back anyway, you know? No, it's, it's time out for our man being mistreated in these relationships. It's time out for, you know, our man being abused in these relationships and just tolerating disrespect. No, you deserve love and respect the same way how us women deserve love and respect. So let's require it back from our prodigal spouses. Don't just look for a counterfeit removal. Begin to, okay, thank you, Lord, for removing the counterfeit. Okay, here's my next requirement. Here's what else I'm looking for, Lord, right? And begin to allow your prodigal to go through the process of becoming their best self for you. OK, because you only want to get married one time. You don't want to keep doing this over and over. You don't want to find yourself standing for this marriage, you know, two years or five years later. No, allow your prodigal to go through their process. You continue to go through your process and become a better woman or man in the process. And when it's time, when the two of you come together in marriage, man, y'all going to be better together. OK, so with that, I am Tequila Coleman. I'll talk to you all real soon. Take care.